Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Today we're going to work on a project that one of my um, viewers sent in, Mike. And uh, Mike had a problem with his pen uh, GTO 220. He's got two of those. I got two handles. And um, he's had a problem where the shaft had seized. Uh, and there was uh, no movement in the shaft here. It's kind of bound or bent. It knocked out the little cord that goes on to the main gear as he was trying to free the uh, the drag stack inside. So you can see that that hole is too wide. It belongs on that little collar there. And, and uh, he, he decided this one got beyond him, and he had asked me if I could take the new parts that he ordered, reassemble the wheel, clean it up, and in the meantime do his brother as well. So I think what we're going to do on this one is we're going to get a get a two for one here. We're going to show you how to take this wheel apart, how to clean it up, lube it, and then uh, maybe we'll do it a second time here just so you uh, don't have to re-spool the video all the time, but uh, that you'll get a notion for this. So this reel was the first of a series of reels that was made in China by Penn after they moved their production over there in 2005. So prior to that, the, uh, the reels were um, uh, the GT series, GTI, GT, GT1. GT2s were made in China, and GTOs uh, were only made in China. They weren't made in the U.S. and moved over and uh, have a brand name change there. These are level wine reels. They're nice, uh, nicely made. They're heavy duty. And uh, they had a run of about six years. They went from 2005 to 2011. And then uh, in 2011, I believe they were displaced by the Rival and Defiance uh, series. But I, I could be wrong and I'll have to go back and fact check that. So let's start with the reel that's whole. We'll show you how to take this apart. And then uh, as we kind of come up, we'll, we'll kind of do side by sides there. So I'm going to remove the outer pieces. And while I'm doing that, I want to Make sure I thank all of our first responders and emergency personnel and folks that are working so hard to keep us healthy during the uh, pandemic. And if you happen to be watching right now in your downtime, well, thank you very much for, for spending that time watching. I do appreciate that. But I more appreciate what it is that you're doing and trying to keep us all healthy and well. So thank you. The uh, reel here is... Uh, going to be taken apart from the, the gear side. I generally do that. It's easier and it's the one that we need to, to work on here. I'm also noticing that there's different screws in this reel for different positions. So the one that goes into the crossbar with a finely threaded screw and the one that goes into the side plate is uh, a rough threaded or coarse threaded screw. So you want to make sure as you go about doing this that you pay attention there because if you try and put a coarse threaded screw into a, uh, a fine tap, you're going to ruin the screw or ruin the tap. And uh, we got two of those coarse, so they're on the bottoms. And then the two in the cross post look to be fine threaded. Now that's important here because I've got a reel in a bag here. And uh, I would be guessing, I probably would get the guess correct, but I would be guessing. And if, that, uh, if I guessed wrong, I could wind up needing a new piece of part. So that's it. We have the two rough screws, two thin, uh, fine, fine thin screws. And what I'm going to do here is, like I said, we're going to play along with this. I'm going to go into the bag of parts that they gave me, actually three bags of parts. I'm going to try and pull those screws out now so that I can make sure that I have those. Here's one, two, three and four, so I have those screws. So I'm going to put those in one tray and put the others in the original tray. I also have the star adjuster, the torsion. I don't see the gear sleeve there. I may be in another bag. Nope, here it is. It's in that bag. Okay, so we're even, even on parts now. There we go. One, 
be particular. Okay, we're going to remove the side plan. I'm just going to leave these off to the side. I noticed that those are the basically the drag washers. Now we can pull off the assembly, take out the spool. We're going to check underneath now to make sure that everything's working here. The first thing I want to check is the teeth on the idler gear. I get a lot of questions about why isn't my uh, line guide working and most of the time it's because one of these teeth has broken off and uh, it's very common for that to occur because that's the weak link in the, uh, the line guide system. So what I'm doing is I'm just cranking it to make sure that the line guide works. I'm also going to move that line guide all the way over here to the left, my left, it'll be the right in a moment. And so we can take out the, the uh, cap and we can go service the pawl underneath. So get the appropriate size screwdriver here. You want to match your screwdriver with your slot. Don't use it when it's too small. You only risk damaging it. And once you get that cap off, the pawl is underneath. Sometimes you can just kind of gently tap and it'll come out. Sometimes if you move it, there you go. And stop and start. So once you pull that cap off, then grab the oil. I'm going to use Real X, which is an aftermarket oil. Just a drop or two on there, and just a drop or two onto the worm drive. And I, uh, I only oil those worm drives if they're external. I don't like to put grease on them. Some folks want to put grease on, go right ahead, but understand that if you're in a salt water environment that has the micro sands and has the drying salt, that uh, that can get absorbed by the grease and become abrasive or slow your reel down. So just be aware of that as you go do that. Right, so that's service there. We have a ball bearing in the back. We're going to go put a drop of oil on. And that tooth, the plastic gear, the idler gear does not need grease. This one happens to have grease on it. But that's self-lubricating by nature. Uh, so there you go. All right, that's the real one. So let's go over and do the same thing with the real two. The one that's in the bag. Pull out. Take the ID tag off here so that we know whose reel it is. Check the same thing here. Make sure all the teeth are working. They are. Scoot that uh, line guide over to the other side. So these are sturdy reels. They, there's no question about them. Uh, folks, you know, ask me a lot about, you know, did, uh, did the design, did the reels, did the quality, those kind of things go down when uh, production was moved to China? I don't think so. Uh, and as I like to point out, a lot of times it's not the manufacturer itself, it's the design changes that the manufacturer makes to make an economy here or there if they've cheapened up the parts or the like. Uh, that causes the differences, not where it was made. Okay, the uh, pole here has been oiled. We'll go ahead and put that cap back on here. Yeah, this one actually says made in China on the back. But a general rule, people ask me if their pen reel was made in the U.S. or not. Gen general rule on pen is if it says made in the U.S., it was. If it doesn't say made in the U.S., it wasn't. Okay, so that's the second reel now. So trying to keep these squared up here. This is the one that we're working on at the moment. I have a bunch of drag washers here and this new new drag set is already on the reel, so we're gonna just go with that. I don't know what that spring is. I guess we will find out, but I don't think that belongs to this reel. We do have a schematic. One of the things you should do as you go to uh, rebuild a reel, particularly if it's in a bag situation like this one, is pull the schematic It'll show you all the pieces and parts. If something's missing, you'll be able to identify it in the burst diagram. 
and also uh, if you need to reorder parts, which is what he did, uh, it tells you what parts to reorder. Okay, this has got a full bridge drag washer assembly inside of it. Save the one that just went on the floor. Get that in a moment. Let's just set that to the side. Pick up the one from the floor. Yes, it does happen more than I care to admit. We're just going to call that one complete for now. We'll take that apart and lube those drag washers in a moment. Let's get some of these bags out of the way here. Okay, let's go back to reel number one, which is the one that's been full. This is the reel seat. I'm going to go put that in here as well. So it looks like what we have left here are the four bridge screws, the handle screw, and the pin that holds the shaft onto this. So, and this looks like the set screw to the handle. So I think we're probably okay there. I guess that set screw belongs to the other one, but all right. So let's take the four bridge screws out of this so we can release the bridge. I always like to do two things when I'm doing this. The first thing is I like to make sure that the eccentric is in the up position, which means this way, free spool. The second thing I like to do is make sure that that spring is unhooked so it doesn't fly when I push it out. So I'm just going to grab a pin and I'm going to unhook that spring. And that's one of the things I didn't see so far in the, uh, the old model. Hopefully it's in this bag here. But you want to uh, make sure that that spring is loose so it doesn't fly. All right, now we'll take the, the four screws out of here. Thank goodness for the notion of interchangeable parts. If I ever do screw these two buckets up here, at least I know that they fit between themselves here. And unlike most pen reels that have fully threaded screws below and partially threaded screws above this reel for whatever reason has only the partially threaded screws so I just felt that release I do cup my hand when I do this and I do that because I don't want anything to drop out in the event that let's say that spring became detached or whatever so I know that these four screws belong to the other reel so let's go put them in there and I pretty much know that that pin is not being used, so I'm going to put that over to the side with this other main gear and uh, drag washers. Okay, we're going to push down now, and that will release the assembly. Now I can take the top off. I'll turn that around for a moment. That's the last of the four screws there. Here's that dog that we wanted to make sure that we, uh, we saved that spring on. That's going to go in the... Oops, put that in the wrong box. That goes in that box. Here's our drag assembly. Now this is what should have happened on the other one. Unfortunately it didn't happen on the other one. And uh, I guess that's where he got in trouble. He was trying to do that and then it just plain didn't work. He was able to get the pin out of the other one. Let's get the pin out of this one so we can take the, the bridge out. I'm going to grab a little pliers to help me with that. When you grab the pliers, don't bite it hard there. Just kind of grab it enough that you can pull like that. Now we can take that gear sleeve off. And as soon as I take that gear sleeve off, I like to put that pin, get it started right back in so I don't leave it around and lose it somewhere. All right. So we want to make sure that's clear. We can see that there's dirt in the channels here. That's probably how it got stuck on the other reel. Now, Penn has a, a system here where if you remove the handle screw, you can put grease, uh, put oil onto the top here. This is what you see when everything is sticking through the handle. You'll generally, this is where the handle screw goes, so you'll be able to put a drop of oil or two in there. When it comes from the factory, it comes greased. And since I have the gear sleeve off, I am going to grease that. This is uh, Penn Precision Real Grease. I'm going to use that for the, uh, the greasing. And I recommend that whosoever grease you use, just make sure that it is a fishing reel grease. All right, just a light coat of grease on there. That's probably too much. Just get a little bit of that off. Too much is going to just clog. We want to make sure that the inside of this is clean. So I'm going to run a cotton swab in there just to make sure that we have any dirt that might be in there out of that uh, gear sleeve. Then we can go put that back on. 
and then you can either tap this in <clears throat> or you can press it in. I like to use my channel lock pliers, just kind of grab it, kind of do a pressing kind of a thing. For your mechanically, most things have not been designed to be hit by hammers, so if you can avoid hitting something with a hammer, I would recommend that you do that. And what I'm doing here is I'm just trying to grab that little, there we are, the little point. That little point can't sit proud of this ridge, otherwise you won't be able to get the, the uh, main gear back on. This is a bearing, so I'm going to oil that bearing. Do it from the inside, do it from the outside. Kind of let it sit while we're putting this drag stack together. If your drags get stuck in there, push them from underneath. The last one sits on a lip, so sometimes that's a little bit more difficult to get out. The drags in this one are fine. There's a little tarnish on here, probably the metal that was used. It's uh, just discoloration, it's not dirt. You want to make sure that the sides and everything are, are fine, and they are. Check the teeth on the main gear, make sure that they're not uh, beat up. I just did a series of uh, jig masters for a charter boat. And I had to replace like five main gears. So don't think that these things are that big or that uh, good that they never break. They do. Most of the time those main gears got chewed up just because of excessive wear, but mostly because of things got trapped in there. A broken pinion gear, a broken spring from the eccentrics. Some other things cause those things to get trapped in the teeth. So always check those teeth. It's important. All right, we've greased that up. We're gonna put the main gear back on. You can see on the inside of this main gear, the collar that uh, got stuck on here. And uh, they did the right thing in, in buying the replacement parts for the, the second gear. All right, I'm gonna use Cal's Universal Drag Grease now. I'm gonna use my gloved hand as a tool. Put a, a little bit of the grease on. Spread it across the washer. If there's any excess on there, wipe it off. And we have two sets of beard washers, and we have two sets of, or three rounded washers. So this one just needs a little cleaning here. And what I'm going to do, since he gave me second ones, this one seems to be pitted, but this one isn't. So I'm just going to grab one from this other set there and substitute that. All right, now we just have discoloration. Okay. All right. So we have three and two, so the threes, or the odd ones, they start it. So we put a fabric washer in with the grease and repeat that process. We're going to do it again. Then we're going to go to the eared washer. I'll do it again and go to the keyed washer. So the eared washers are called that because they look like they have ears. They have a round circle and two tabs. Keep washers have flat sides and key to the shaft, and that's kind of how it works. One holds the main gear, the ones with the ears, the other holds the shaft, which is the eared washer uh, or the keep washer. And between the two, when you put pressure on them, that's how you get a drag system. Okay, last one of these again. I'm just leaving a thin coating on. If there was a thick coating of that, then I would certainly go back and I would do the. Uh, Clean up of that with the, um, the paper towel. All right, well, we got the new one over here, so we want to do the same thing. Now I'm thinking, for the most part, that that uh, this bridge assembly came as it should. Yeah, there's, there's grease inside this, and this will come with the assembly. I'm just going to put the oil on the bearing, just like we did on the other one. Again, this is kind of a two for one. If you missed the first one, you can. Pay attention to the second one. We're going to do this again. So we have the, the same series of washers and uh, metals. We're going to do the same thing here. We're going to assume, although that's a bad practice, we're going to assume that these teeth are clean, not bent. And we're going to get grease onto that main gear so that it performs nicely. You don't have to get it in every tooth when it spins it's going to spread itself. All right we're going to go ahead and put that on. Yeah you did have a, uh, a little washer underneath there. 
You do the same thing with the new ones. Now, sometimes they'll tell you that it's optional. I find that with the grease, it prolongs the life and the flexibility of the washer. It certainly doesn't add anything in terms of max drag and the like, but it does prolong the life by keeping these flexible. That's why I prefer to use it. But you can put these in dry. You can also put uh, fishing reel grease on there rather than just the dry grease. But uh, the dry grease is Cal's Universal Dry Grease. It's an Okuma product. It uh, was designed for dry washers, so I'm not a uh, not a chemist or anything, but I believe if, uh, if the people that know what they're doing out there are doing it for a specific purpose, go ahead and use it for that specific purpose. All right, the yard washer goes next. Last one on the, the dry washer then. And then we have the top washer. All right, so that's stack number two. All right, now we have our original reel that we took. We have the yoke pinion gear, two springs, and the, uh, the jack. Let's get this off of here so that we can clean it. To do that, you pick it up, slide it over to that little indentation and pull it off. There's your two springs. I'm just going to leave these on the table because they're going to go right back in. And this is kind of what I was talking about when we refer to manufacturing and uh, well, like I, I'm not sure what this metal is, but it's not brass. It's got greening and corrosion on it, so I'm going to assume it's not brass. And uh, if you open up a, uh, an earlier pen reel, these things would be brass, and you wouldn't see this type of corrosion on them. But uh, so somebody substituted somewhere in the reel design. But there's nothing to say the pen wouldn't have done that, even if the reels were made or continue to be made in this country. Okay, here's your eccentric with the spring. I like to put a little drop of oil behind there. That'll work its way into the other side where the lever controls the free spool. I'm going to take those two springs and put them back into the cavity here. It's like herding cats here. I get one in, the other one falls out. All right, we're going to grab the yoke then, which I just cleaned off with some steel wool. Put a little bit of grease onto the shoulders of that, both sides. This looks like a stainless steel gear here. It's nice. Do the same thing here. Check the teeth. Make sure that they're not knocked out of alignment or chewed up. Again, I've seen a couple of these in the past few weeks now that have been missing a tooth or a chip or a bend that caused the main gears to fail. It wasn't on this particular reel, it was on the Jig Masters. But uh, don't just assume that, uh, that these things are sturdy and are going to last. All right, then we just want to reverse the process for putting this back on. Just slide it in through that hole and set it. And let's do that with the, the other case here. And I'm still looking on this one, I'm still looking for that uh, dog. So here's the case, let's go do this again. I have the spring the other way now. So in this case, the, the spring that I was looking for or hoping for is actually on the post as opposed to being on the dog. That's okay, I'm going to take that off. Put it in the bucket here. I'm going to put a drop of oil into the eccentric like we did. Kind of redundant, right? And get a little bit of grease onto the eccentric itself. There's our spring one, our jack, our pinion gear, our yoke, our dog. One more spring. There it is. Congratulations have all the pieces and parts we need to put both wheels together. Okay, these look uh, like they've been cleaned. Just feeling for any grit, we're okay there. All right, so we'll do this again. We're gonna put one in each cavity. And we're gonna do the same thing again, aren't we? We're gonna drop them out of the cavity. <laughs> Consistent. And grease up the yoke. 
I'm going to check the teeth on the pinion gear, sometimes called the spool gear. And we'll just get grease on that. I already got grease on the main gear. I'm going to put this over the two springs. Compress the springs then. And put the jack back on. And we're set on the two. Okay, so let's go back to reel number one then. We've had this, we've serviced the paw, we've greased the, or we've oiled the worm gear, we've checked the idler gear to make sure that all the teeth are there, we oiled the, the bearing, we have the spool. The spool is always wonderful when somebody puts the line on it. You've got to make sure that you do not trap the line as you go to reinstall the spool. A little bit of grease onto both sides of the spool shaft. And place the spool in again. Check for that line as you go and put it through. You can see it's already kind of jamming up there. So I use this little pick most of the time to pull that line out of there. Your reel will not. All right, I guess I just exceeded the limit on my card there. All right, so just tighten all four of them, but in an X pattern again. Start with this one. Go up top for the final tightening. Come around on the other side. And then before you go any further, just test to make sure that that works. Come around the back side then. I'm going to attach that spring. I use a little pick. Just kind of get it situated over it. Most of the time you can grab it and get it on. It's not a high tension spring at all. There we go. The spring is on. Now we can give it another test. And we have the anti-reverse. All right. This one is done on this side, so let's just do instant replay again, do the other side. Let's just uh, let make sure I have that spring. All right, we're all lubed up on this one. Have the new assembly here. I press down. Bring the, the other one in. I'm going to turn it halfway. I'm going to go dig out a side plate screw that goes up top. I want to get the dog and the dog spring. In this case, I probably should have done that before I did all this compressing here. But you want to make sure you hook on to the... the other set of the dog spring. There we go. You have that correct. I didn't, didn't even lose the setup. All right. Just lost the spring. I grab my dog over the top of the screw. Sit that in place. Rotate until I lock that screw in. Come back and do a partial tightening. I got it started. That spring just doesn't want to stay on there right now. So I come back to part two. Get it started. Back to the other side. And I'm just looking at that little spring there because I'm sure it wants to shoot somewhere. And one more, so we're very even, even in terms of getting these pieces correct. And once you have them all in, come on back, tighten them up again. So it's kind of like instant replay, right? North, south, east, west. Until they're all tightened up. Turn it. Make sure it's not binding in any way. We're in good condition. All right, I'm going to take my glove off for this because these little springs always become problematic for me. And I'm kind of done with the looping side anyway. All right, I want to do this again. And grab a little needle nose pliers to hold this while I try and do that.
Okay, so with a little patience and effort, you can connect the dots. This is all working now. So now we have the two reels. Let's go put the side plate back on. We're going to remember as we did this now that the two threaded ones are going to go into the crossbars. So overall a nice reel, in this case two nice reels. We've seen one of the problems with the, the reels is in that, uh, in the metals in the uh, bridge assembly there, both of them <coughs> are discolored. In one case the one froze causing the problem that uh, was the initial issue here and it seized the, uh, the collar of the main gear onto the gear sleeve. So I don't know if that's a design fault or what, but both of them had this coloration and uh, marking from it. We saw that they have a very adequate uh, gear gearing system, that's for sure, and that they're designed for big fish, and I'm sure they're catching those big fish, um, and will continue to do so with these tune-ups. So uh, <clears throat> hopefully uh, when we get these back, they'll get out going fishing and uh, be very responsive along the way, nicely tuned up oiled and greased in all the appropriate locations and so on. All right, that's this one back into the basket. Let's do the second one, kind of instant replay again. I want to make sure that we have the grease on the tail here. I think it might have slipped off a little bit while I was kind of working its way through the clogged, uh, I think the caught line. All right, again, the fully threaded screw or the, the machine. The, uh, machine screw, I guess, is what it would be called, along with the fine threads going to the cross posts. Now, folks ask me about should they, could they, will they, can they use a mechanical screwdriver when doing this? <coughs> My recommendation is always no, don't do that. Uh, it's too easy to, to cross strip these things, get them started manually. I get it. There's some reels out there. I got a lot of screws, and uh, if you don't have strong hands, uh, it can be very tiring and sometimes even difficult to complete. If you need to use that mechanical screwdriver, please leave the screws short. Do not drive them all the way in, and please make sure they're started before you go and uh, start uh, using that tool. Because I've seen a lot of stripped reels and. Questions come in all the time about how do I remove a broken stud and things like that. And unfortunately, it's always better to uh, remove the issue rather than deal with the issue. Okay, so there we go. Before we're in, let's go we have the ferrule. We'll try to adjust the tensioner. Our adjuster on. So do the same on this side. Ferrule, collar, drag adjuster. There's two sides on the drag adjuster. One has flat sides for the ears, and it usually has a stamp marking in terms of what the the reel height is that it belongs to. The other side is rounded. Rounded side goes out. You can usually tell when a reel's been worked on, or sometimes you can tell when a reel's worked on just simply by noticing that the uh, this is inverted. Okay, handle time. Got a handle and it's got the set screw in it, so I'm going to believe that's from this reel. I'm not sure. Doesn't matter. I see I have two of them. That's always a good thing. Handle goes on. If we didn't crease the shafts, we would do that uh, at this point. We have a handle screw that's the same size as the Pen 60 handle screws. So make sure you have the right wrenches. In this case, I have a wrench that has both of them incorporated in it. So there's never an issue. These are scalloped screws, so make sure that the indentation lines up with the set screw hole. Then we can put the set screw on. Uh, 
and other than a test drive, this reel is, is done. So let's go over and finish the other one, and we'll give a side by side comparison. We'll see how we did. Okay, we have the handle screw, we have the set screw, we have the handle. So, last time for instant replay here. Again, tighten this up. I like to thread them by hand. These are uh, brass pieces usually, and they can strip if you cross thread them. So get as much done by hand as you can. Then use the wrench that either came with it or whatever wrench you have to align the scallop. Put the set screw hole. Then the set screw can go in. And then I only saw one of these rod clamps in here. I don't know where the other one is. But there's a rod clamp here. I'm going to put it on either one, I guess. I saw the screws on the other one, but I didn't see the rod clamp. I have to look around. Maybe it's left, in, left it at home when it came back in pieces and parts. Let's go ahead and put that back on here so we don't lose that. Let's give them drives. Let's go see how they do. And we'll pick up the miscellaneous parts, make sure that he gets those back, and uh, this service will be complete. So again, for first responders, thank you for everything it is that you do out there. If we're uh, not a first responder, then uh, please do everything that was being asked of us. Wear the masks, keep your social distance, uh, try to stay safe. Here's a, uh, an example I just wanted to point out as we're here. This reel has got an awful lot of line on it, and it's almost rubbing against the back of the line guide. So if you have sluggish performance from time to time, go check to see that you don't have not overloaded your line. But this reel is doing fine. This one's ready to go fishing. The free spool works. Tighten up the drags. Drags are all ready to go. Loosen them up if you're going to store them. Don't leave them, don't leave them pressed in like that. Let's go to reel number two. A little bit of a knocking there, but this adjuster is off. There we go. Nice and loose, nice and tight. Make sure the drags are working. Tighten them up. Very good. All right, so these are ready to go back to their rightful owner. And I uh, just saw two for one on the, the Pen GTO 220s, a Chinese made uh, version of a pen reel, circa 1905 to uh, 2005 to 2011. Nice reels if you have the opportunity to pick them up, uh, go ahead and do that. They are strong internally, just keep them well uh, maintained and uh, they'll last you a long time, I'm sure. Alright, so with that, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Thank you for watching.